Good morning. Welcome to today's webinar. The topic today for discussion for today's webinar will be on the urban driveways, adding urban driveway modeling to your corridors. And this, of course, will be in the F.SS4 workspace, Geopack and MicroStation, or Power Geopack. My name is Vern Danforth, and I'm going to try to go through a couple of different methods. So in the uh, webinar invitation, we talked about discussing two methods for modeling driveways uh, for an urban design project and the advantages or disadvantages of each. Through our experience, uh, since we've implemented SS3, probably about, uh, I guess, a year, maybe, yeah, about a year now, we've been working on it probably for two years, but at least it's been out in the districts and in the consultants uh, using it for about a year. And we've come across a couple different methods for doing the driveway modeling um, so that you can have it in your plan and your model and your cross sections and, and, so, and be able to compute quantities and that type of thing. And the two methods include really the uh, what we used to do in SS2 or roadway designer, which is the driveway template components. However, they've been improved a little bit. And the 3D urban driveway civil cell. We did a recording, I guess it was earlier this year, when we were doing the detail modeling and how you could add a 3D driveway civil cell. That civil cell has been improved as well in SS4 and also uh, the methods for it have been uh, a little bit more clarified. So there's been several projects that have used or used both methods success and failures and both and I wanted to share some of that information with you as well as how to take what we deliver and apply it to your projects both using the driveway template component and a 3D driveway urban driveway civil cell. Now I'm just going to cover these steps real quick and uh, there's a lot of detail here and then I'm going to actually go in and, and do these. Uh, there's several steps to configure the driveway template components. Uh, basically, you're going to do, uh, you're going to place a reference line, you're going to place a 2D urban driveway civil cell, or you're, you're welcome to draw the, the urban driveway in the plan view, however you like. And then um, we actually have a driveway modeling template that was delivered in the F.SS4 template library, so you're going to copy that into your project. You'll need to set up a relationship uh, to your curb for all of the components that you want to turn off when you want the driveway to turn on. And then you're going to add in the driveway template to your project template. And basically, you're just going to set it up to work with your project, doing these changing utility strips, sidewalk widths, adding your horizontal feature constraint targets, or at least checking them. Uh, if you need to add in conditions for the tie-down slab, check and display rules these type of things I'm going to cover. Then you'll you'll want to change your project design stage setting. Uh, what we found is that if, uh, if you want to use this particular driveway template, it's best if you process at a really tight interval. So you can turn off all of your additional critical interval drops and just use a multiplier of one and set your template interval to two. And what that essentially does is it processes your corridor every two feet. And that minimizes gaps. And you'll see what I mean, what the why this is necessary. And of course, then you'd synchronize your template drops. There are a few more. Let me move back. Then you'll have to add in uh, certain corridor references to your corridor. So you'll have to add in the driveway that you drew and the drop curb face lines so that it will transition the curb correctly. If you have super elevation, you, you can reapply that, and then you'll need to basically prepare that back of sidewalk to use the, the vertical line that's created in a normal super elevation, super elevated state for the back of sidewalk. Again, I'm going to show you that. And then you'll add that vertical point control from the 3D model to the driveway sidewalk line. Otherwise, it's just going to be sitting there as though it was a normal 2% unless you do these last couple of steps, actually last three steps. So that's a lot. I know I don't expect you to understand that right away, so that's why I'm going to cover it. Now, if you're doing a 3D urban driveway civil cell, there's a little bit less steps. So you're essentially, you're just going to place the, the reference line, and then you're going to place the civil cell and you'll have a couple of reference lines. 
well actually before you do that you need to make sure that you have profiles on your edge of pavement and your back sidewalk lines and I tell you which tools to use and how to do it and then you can place your 3D urban driveway civil cell. Now the one thing here that I'll just mention right up front is that if you don't add this extra line in front of your driveway along your edge of pavement you will probably have problems. Not always but usually you don't have problems if you just use a partial offset line from your edge of pavement at a zero offset along the, the width actually of your driveway and then use that as the line that you pick as a reference in the driveway because you're going to actually profile that line from your normal edge of pavement and it seems to place in a lot smoother. Uh, if, you've, if you've tried to use the civil cell and your back of sidewalk lines if it just looks all contorted that's likely what the problem is. I'll, I'm going to demonstrate some of that as well. After you've placed the 3D civil cell, it usually comes in where it needs to be. There's not a whole lot left to be done, but you may want to modify it. Maybe the back of sidewalk is going to be four feet and it comes in at, at uh, five. Maybe the width of it, it's a, it's, it comes in at 18. It's supposed to be 15. You can modify those things. And then what you're going to do is essentially the driveway's built. Then you're going to add corridor clipping references. And this is an it's not really optional if you want to clip out the portion of the driveway where the corridor is, but it's optional in that when you do it, because you may want to wait until the end to do this. It, it all depends. But there are three corridor clipping references you have to add. One is from the drop curb of the linear template, the other is from the tie down slab at the back, and then the other is the third one is the actual terrain that is created on the top surface of the driveway. Uh, behind the drop curb. Once you add those three as corridor clippings, it will clip out your corridor and you will see only your driveway in that area. There is a little tolerance issue with it clipping out the normal type F curb and I'll show you how you can fix that. That's another thing we ran into. The widths of the drop curb and the width of the normal type F curb are both two feet and for some reason the clipping the clipping algorithm will leave a little sliver at the back of the sidewalk. So if you just modify the width of one or the other to be just a little bit bigger, it will clip them out just fine. And then all you have to do then is just apply your super elevation control without doing the extra other steps and your driveway will get modified accordingly because it's using the profile on the back of sidewalk and the edge of pavement. So those are the two controlling lines. As soon as you add point control, it modifies those verticals and your driveway gets rebuilt or as they say, healed. Now, what are the advantages and disadvantages of each? I'll tell you right up front, the driveway template component advantages, it will process faster in the long run, believe it or not. The disadvantages are that there's a little bit more setup. You have to have a little bit tighter, well, you have to have tighter intervals just to have it actually look right in the model. And there will be gaps, possibly, without, without adding any extra key stations, you possibly will get gaps. For the, I'm sorry, for the 3D urban driveway civil cell, the advantages are there's less setup. You basically have to add a couple lines, a couple profiles, and plot them. The disadvantages are that uh, once you add them as clipping objects, you will notice that your corridor will bog down considerably. It'll be a lot slower to process. However, you know, it'll be a lot cleaner. You won't have any gaps, but you will have this extra overhead of clipping objects. Now, I'll just show you a little summary here. Basically, this shows component templates, more setup, less processing time. You have to have the, the gaps are going to be equal to the intervals. And the quarter objects that you'll be adding are the point control and the horizontal feature constraints. For the 3D civil cell, there's less setup. It will take a lot longer time to process. You won't have any gaps, it'll be a cleaner model, and the quarter objects are clipping objects. It's going to depend upon the number of driveways that you have on your project. I can't tell you what the magic number is. It's really up to you. As far as the processing time, what are you willing to live with? I guess that's what I'm really trying to say here. We've done a project with component templates that had over 200 driveways, and we've done some 3D civil cells on projects that had 30 or 40, and, you know, it depended upon what your preference is, but at least you'll you'll be able to see how to apply both of them. So I'm going to just get into MicroStation, and we're going to start talking about the first one. The first thing I want to show you is this is uh, 
you know, essentially where I want to add a driveway. And um, I already have placed a reference line. Of course, this, this reference line I set 100 feet off of this intersection. So if I wanted to modify that, you know, I could modify it. And once I've placed the driveway, modeled it, everything, if I want to change this dimension, everything will heal itself um, because, of the, because of the fact that we're using civil geometry and everything that we do to place this. Okay, so once I have that line, then I'll go out to and, and get a driveway in here. Uh, without having to draw it by hand, I can just go into our civil cells. And in the driveway template, there are, there's a 3D urban, which does both the horizontal, uh, I'm sorry, both the 2D and the 3D. And then there's just a 2D driveway. So I'm just going to choose the 2D driveway, and it's asking me for the uh, pavement asphalt EOP line. So that's going to be this line right here. And then it will ask me for the sidewalk back, and it will ask me for the left side of the driveway. Those are the three reference it needs to know to build an urban driveway. And it will plop it in there, uh, probably not the best word, and I can reset to change its orientation and accept that. Now, the when, whenever you use either one of these uh, two, if you want to make modifications to it, um, if you want to modify the width of it, the width is controlled off of the back of curb line just because of the way it's built. If you select this line, you're going to see there's the width right there in the front. So if I change it to, say, 15 feet, it will heal itself, and it heals itself holding the left side. Um, if you wanted to modify it uh, in the horizontal location, I could just select this line and change it from 100 feet to, let's say, 80 feet. Uh, actually, I'll just yeah, I'll do 80 feet. Of course, you want to make it into, according to standards, and it, modifi it modifies it. If I wanted to change it so that it's over here in this curve, I could change this to 180, and it will slide it over there. Uh, control Z, you have to do it from the middle if you want the whole thing to move. And it will move it into the curve there, and you can see now it's on a curved component. Now, we did make some improvements to the civil cells uh, recently, so we're going to attach those to this uh, webinar, uh, the ITL file that has the, I'm sorry, the DGN file that has these um, uh, civil cells in it. And the two main improvements that we made were that when it was initially made a couple of years ago, a year and a half ago or so, it wasn't using a parallel offset for this front line. It was actually a line between points. So that if you tried to place this driveway on a curve, it was cording across where this normal uh, drop curve gutter line would be. And so that's been improved. The other thing was that the back was not dependent upon the front of the driveway. So if you change the width at the front, you weren't getting the same width at the back, and you had to change, change them both. Now, as you've already, as I've already demonstrated, if you change the this one driveway dimension, it will change. The other dimension that sometimes you need to change, if it's a really uh, close, uh, a narrow utility strip, is that you want to set this to minus four, so that it draws the uh, sidewalk at only four feet instead, and then it will taper the the driveway. Uh, slope up to that line instead of to the normal sidewalk line. And then, of course, I'm not going to do it, but if uh, once you've got this driveway in here, you're going to want to go in and um, do partial deletes and then um, microstation modify to extend to lines in order to clean up the line work. Okay? Now we're going to talk about the templates. So in order to provide uh, if you, as you can see, this template is just uh, a normal uh, urban divided section. It's already been processed. You've seen this in all of our training files. So I'm going to go to the quarter modeling. I'm going to go to the, to the actual template library. And then this is the template. Now, of course, I always copy this and paste it back on top of itself so I have a backup of it. And then when I start editing things, I can edit it that way. Now. The first thing you're going to need to do is go over into the template library organizer and go to the DOT's uh, delivered ITL file. On my machine, it's in this f.ss4 server, geopack, corridor. 
and here's the ITL file. And within here, in the components folder, is a driveway folder. We used to have in SS2 100 driveways out here, and they all did different things, a couple different modeling folders. Now we just have one driveway drop curb template. And I'll show you how that works, but first I'm going to move it into my project ITL file, and put it right there so that it's uh, available for me to look at. And I'll save that. Now I'm going to go take a look at those that driveway template, and I'll show you how this was configured to work. So <clears throat> when it first comes delivered, it has a trigger line, and so the first thing we want to do is look to see what the trigger line is looking for. It's set to pavement miscellaneous. I'm going to change this to driveway because I'm going to use the driveway lines that are already out there that I've just placed with my civil cell. So driveway is what I'm going to target. And because of the way that was built, of course, all these are a child of this line. So once it sees a driveway, it's going to turn this component on. And this also has a display rule so that you can turn off other components in your project uh, template. Uh, the other thing I want to do is um, this was built so that the driveway was way out here at 14 feet and it only needs to be 10 feet. And yes, it did have a horizontal feature constraint, but if you have a, a static sidewalk, I recommend setting it at the static location. That way, if, if it is a uh, if it's moving, meandering, then of course you'll, it will follow the horizontal feature constraint, but I usually set it to the static condition. Now the other thing is it has been built so that it would project a surface, mainly because the project that we applied it to originally was a project a surface type. Uh, the back of sidewalk was going to hit try to match the existing ground, uh, existing sidewalk or the existing ground, and so it was set to project a surface. So the way this one is constrained is you want to change this to a vertical from the tie point, which is the, the main curb. And that is usually, uh, I know, I mean, it's 0.375 above the uh, curb of the, uh, where the edge of pavement is. So it's 0.375 plus it's going to be 2% times whatever that distance is. So that's uh, 8 feet, so I usually add 0.16, so I can just do the calculation here, 0.16, and it comes out to be, if you tab, uh, I was talking, so it's 0.375 plus 0.16, so it's 0.535. If you hit apply, close. So that fixes it at a slope of 2% essentially is what it's doing so that it goes to there because that's the normal configuration of our sidewalk. Now the way this template works is this is the driveway line that starts in the 2D view and if I move this around it essentially it's this line right here. It starts out at one feet and it transitions back follows along the back of the uh, the front of the sidewalk, or in this case, the uh, slope break of the driveway, then it tapers back for the flare. These lines aren't really necessary because it, they drop with the curb. So what this one has, if you look at this, if you edit this point, it has a driveway feature constraint. So we're going to add that as a horizontal feature to, the, to this corridor once we've placed it in here. And it's set to 51 feet, so I checked that one, that's fine. The next one I want to check is this one right here. And this one has a horizontal feature uh, drop curb. However, I noticed that the civil cell actually places what's called a curb face line for that point. So I'm going to change this to curb face, and you will need to also. Or you can change the line in the 2D to a drop curb. Either way, uh, you just want to make sure those features are matching. And the other thing, I want to place this, I want to go at negative 1. It really needs to go uh, about 10 inches, actually 4 inches, but I set it to minus 1, which is 1 foot, and it will look backwards that way. Choose apply, close. So what's really happening is this line here, if you test it, it's going to follow the driveway line, and once it gets to where it matches this sidewalk, it's going to tra change from a normal 4-inch sidewalk to a 6-inch driveway. 
that basically matches the thickness of the driveway as it comes across there. Um, that's one control that's happening. The other control that's happening that we just looked at is this point right here. And what this is going to do as the, as the um, <clears throat> front face of the curve widens out to where the drop point location is, it drops the, the driveway uh, slope so that it follows that. And of course, if, if, if this line was set back here, this is also dropping as well. Another thing that was pointed out to me in our delivered template is that this should be this slope right here at this front point here instead of being a fixed slope should be a, a vector offset between these two points and so I'm going to fix that real quick and I'll fix it in our normal one before I send it out and it should be set to zero it was causing issues with creating the quantities in the earthwork so essentially it was it was not in line with it. <clears throat> so once I have those modifications made, it's ready to be added to my normal template. So I'll go over to my State Road 61, and I'm going to put this on my right side. So all you've got to do is drag and drop this over here. Before you do that, uh, I always catch myself. Make sure you go to your preferences load up the DOT preferences so you get the right of fixes in case you wanted to put it on both sides. And the other thing I'm going to check is to make sure mirror and reflect is both off because I just want to add one to this side for now. And I'll place it out here right above the curb line and I'm dragging from this and I'll set it right around here at three feet or so. Alright, once I have that in there, I'll add the full constraint to the point that I really want to attach it to, which is here. Choose, uh, just set this to an even three. And then I'm going to edit this and I'm going to put the vertical offset, which is what places it uh, vertically down on that pavement point. And choose apply and that's done as a parametric constraint in the corridor as we know. And then the other thing I need to do is check the relationships of these curbs. So I think I already did that. I'm going to turn on, I'm going to just delete this handrail test because I don't need it in this project. So I'm going to delete that whole thing. And then look at these components and you'll see there's a right curb and underneath the right curb is everything that I need. Actually that's not true. So I've got to set up the, actually it is true, I'm sorry. So there is the curb and then the base is underneath it and then the sidewalk is there and underneath the sidewalk is the utility strip so there's a there's a chained family relationship based back to this curb the reason that needs to happen is because we want to turn all this off whenever it sees a driveway which is this target so all you have to do after you've placed it set the vertical offset you know so that it drops down into place is double click on this curb go into the display rules find the rule display driveway which is the component this component right here and you're going to say uh, to not display this curb when this line appears which is when it finds a driveway so it's just not display driveway selected rule and it will equal false because in the current location in the current status of this template uh, this line is true because it, it, it is, it's there, which means all this is active and none of this will be active. That's what that test means. So you choose OK and then apply and close. And if you looked at a normal view, you would see that that, that goes away. And if you test, if you test in here, you'll see that the, uh, if you have a driveway drawn, it will draw that in there and when it's not there it will be a normal curb and that's how that will work. The other thing that you might want to do in here is add in your end conditions. So uh, whereas in the normal template has end conditions that reach down to the surface, uh, it's really up to you. Uh, we kind of left it up to you as to how you want to tie your driveway down uh, if you want to use end conditions, you can go to the end conditions folder. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to add one to here. 
for six to one cut and six to one fill. And then I'm just going to modify these, set this to infinite, and just narrow it down to 10 feet. So what it will do is it'll apply a slope to the back of the driveway. And of course, you're going to want to, um, you, can, um, you can add a component in here, which is a curb component as a child of this, I'm, I'm sorry, a uh, sidewalk type component or a driveway component to this line um, uh, so that it bases, builds that last slab. And that's, you know, that's not too difficult. You can just add a simple component. You can call it a driveway. You can pick it from here. And then you can right click and delete both constraints on this and add full constraint to here and set it to zero, zero, choose OK. And now you've added that slab in there. Do the same thing on this one. And then um, because this is constrained to that point, it will draw one or the other of those, um, those uh, back driveway tie down pads to the existing ground. If you want to modify the slope, whatever you can, um, and so that's how you could add that last component. So um, let me just do that again, add a simple component driveway. I'm going to pick here, right click, delete both constraints, add full constraint to here, set it to zero, choose OK. And now I've got the last pad in there as well. Okay, so now you have the driveway configured in here. Um, we're going to close and save. And we're going to synchronize this corridor. But before we do that, I want to talk about the, uh, you notice that the, the design stage is set to preliminary, which means that it's going to process uh, 10 times whatever your interval is. So if you look at your template drop interval in the properties, it's set to two right here. So it's processing every two feet. And what I was recommending was that you set your interval to two, but you change your default preliminary design stage to a multiplier of one. And what did I mean by that? Well, if you go to the Project Explorer and you look in the civil standards, you'll see that in this design file is this project setting under here, preliminary. And if you go to the properties, so in the properties of the preliminary design stage, you have your multiplier, and you also have all of these uh, include critical sections. So what I would do is turn these to false, and it will reprocess uh, every time. If you want to stop, make all these changes once, uh, and not have to reprocess every time, I'll just uh, change that lock on here on this quarter handle. I'll unlock it so that now I can come in here and go to the design stage settings here. And if I make these changes, it won't process every time. So I can change that to false. I can change this to false. And I can set this multiplier to 1. So it will do 1 times the interval. It'll do every 2 feet and only every 2 feet. And that's that's the best setup for doing this template type driveway. So I'm going to set it to 1. And then lock it and process it. So I'll lock it and process it. So as the corridor gets recreated here with these new settings, it will reprocess. And you'll see it's, it's a much tighter interval here. And I'm going to close these two dialogues now. So now you see that my, drive, or my driveway still isn't in here yet. And that's because I haven't added any corridor references to this corridor. So that's what I'll do next. So I'll go over to Add Corridor Reference. It asks me for the corridor. Select the corridor. And then the first references I want to get are these driveway lines here, here, and here. Those were drawn from the 2D civil cell. I didn't have to drop it. I didn't have to, you know, do anything to it. And then the other lines that I want to get are these curved face lines. So there's one, and there's one, 
and this is what controls the template or that curve to drop. As soon as I have those six references, I just hit reset, and it will reprocess this corridor, and it will essentially trigger off the normal components on that right side and draw in the driveway components on that side. Once I get back to a selection set, I'll zoom out and Oh, I forgot to resynchronize my template, of course. I'm sure you all probably said that, right? So all of the changes that I originally had made to the uh, project template didn't get applied to the corridor yet, even though I added all those references. Okay, so now if you look in here, there's actually a driveway, and there is this uh, search line up here that if you just hit your F7 key, it will go away. And this is now that driveway. And if I go to a top view, you'll see how this driveway has been drawn in here. Obviously, there's a couple of issues out here. If I look at a cross-section through this driveway here and uh, try to find out where my cross-section is here. Oh, it's still in this other tool. So I want to just process this cross-section view until I can see that blue line. I may have to open up another one. Let me just do that. So I'll come to the corridor here and open a cross-section view, select this view. And uh, then I'm going to locate via data point from here, select this line right here. And I see that it looks like I don't have a priority set up between the two, so it's drawing this back a driveway in here, adding that extra slope in there. But it did draw the driveway in there, and if you move backwards, you'll see that it's uh, when you get out of the driveway, it draws the normal uh, curb, like the normal components. These two need to be set as a child of this driveway. That last, that those last two components that I add in there, I need to make those changes. What I'm really going to do is, just for the sake of time, I'm just going to delete these components and resynchronize. And I need to make this a child of the sidewalk of that component and apply and do the same thing to this one. I really, it doesn't matter which one you make it a child of, just so that they're all related to this trigger line. So I should have added that in my steps. If you're going to add end conditions, make sure you add the parent-child relationship to it as well. So then if you synchronize this again, and once it's finished, I'm going to show you some of the disadvantages. But the nice thing about this is that you can just go in here and plop in all your driveways with the 2D civil cells and then go back in and add in these corridor references. After you have one driveway working, they're going to work the whole length of the job. And again, if you move something, if you change this to 100 feet, it will essentially reheal itself and reprocess the corridor, and the driveway will get relocated. Not that you're moving driveways around that often, but if you need to change the width of it or the you know, horizontal location of it, uh, if you do it this way, the model will update as well. Now, you see there are gaps in there between the sidewalk and the driveway, and you'll also see there's going to be gaps between where the type F curb is and so now the driveway's been relocated down here. So now you see there's gaps here, and that's because we're going from a type F to a to a drop curb type from that other template, B1 over here. There'll also be one from the sidewalk to the driveway, and that's just normal because we're switching components. If that's good enough for your cross sections, then it can be good enough to, to use. And you'll notice over here that the drop curb drops down, and that's because of that added face line. It actually drops that curb down, and of course this cuts back there like that. I notice this is really a profile issue because it's going from a sidewalk that's in fill to a sidewalk in, that's in cut, and I was just playing with this, and what I did was I found that if I change the profile just a little bit, it actually will fix that. I don't remember which point it was that I raised. I think it was this one here. 
So all I'm doing is making a profile change. And you'll see that little flare will go out, will, will, will change. It's just the location of the driveway. So I'm just going to change this to 35, and it will heal the profile, and it will heal the model. And the driveway, of course, will get healed as well. So the profile got healed. If I collapse this back down, uh, I guess I picked the wrong one, but it, it, it basically adjusted the corridor, adjusted the sidewalk, and so on and so forth. I guess I'm still going from a, uh, a fill. Oh, I know what it is. I still have super elevation applied. I actually I turned that off. So super elevation isn't applied in this case. Now the drawback to this one is that if you apply super elevation to this outside edge of pavement, you're going to have to go get the profile of the 3D line for the normal condition of the sidewalk because it's not going to apply super elevation to that driveway. Once you have that 3D profile on this sidewalk, you can apply it to the back of the driveway line and then this, the driveway will heal. It will be according to the super elevation of the project. Essentially that's what you're going to find for adding a template to a uh, a driveway template to a corridor. I want to move on and do the 3D civil cell next. What you'll need in this case is you'll need also a, a reference line. So I'm going to add in a side reference line. And you can do it exactly perpendicular or eyeball it, whatever. It really just needs to know the intersection point of the left side of the driveway. So I'm just going to draw a line from here to here. And I just want to match this. Uh, let me do control Z. I just want to match the same as uh, this other line, just for the sake of this. And set this to the active feature. Go draw this. Now it should be drawing a green line. Now, the next part of the setup that I said was pretty important is that you have to make sure you've got profiles on these two elements. And then also, I would set a reference line in front of this as well. So I'm going to use the single offset partial. And I'm going to set it to 0.5 feet, and I'll select this line here. And then I'm just going to do it from here to here. And that's essentially about the location of the driveway. If you want to do it exactly from your 2D object or something, you can. And I'm just leaving this at 0.5 so that I can see it. And then the next thing I'm going to do is come over to this sidewalk, and I'm going to open its profile over here. And then I'm, I'm looking at this line right here. So what I want to do is take the profile from the 3D model and apply it to the 2D element. That's something we do quite a bit. So we use this project profile to element. And it will ask me the element I want to project. And if I slide over into the 3D model, it's going to pick the back of sidewalk line. And where do I want to project it? I want to project it on this element right here. and it will eventually highlight it. And you'll see that a profile has been created out here. So now this sidewalk has an active profile. So if I highlight there, you see it says active profile. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this edge of pavement line, or essentially I'm going to do it to this green line. So I'm going to do project profile to element, and you can do the range if you like. I'll do the, this one just because I, I did it earlier and it worked. I'm going to select the edge of pavement line in the model. And I'm going to project it onto this construction line. Notice the little blue lines that get drawn as a reference showing you that you're going to go from here to here. So I'm going to select it and it's going to project that profile to that element. And if I open the profile for this, you'll see there's a profile out here. There should have been a profile out there. Let's try that again. I was taking a shortcut. Let me try this and apply it to this 2D element first. So I'm going to select this line and I want to go to the edge of pavement. It's thinking. Okay, hold on.
Uh, sometimes it just won't doesn't show up. I've noticed that, but I'm gonna get a profile on there. Just hang with me here. Another way you can do it is if you do the profile by 3D element tool, you can select the line that you want to put the profile on. And I want to make sure I get the right line that one. And the 3D line would be this one. And it will create that. Starts recreating the corridor. There's two different tools. And I know this can be tedious, but that's part of the setup. So once this line has a profile, then you can project it to this line also. So I'll, I'll try to do it that way. So select the element to project. That would be this one. And I want to project it onto this one. And there's the profile. So a couple of different ways of getting it. Once I have it created, the profile that is, I'm going to set this offset back to zero, which is what I originally wanted it. I leave it out there at 0.5 just so I can see it when I know I'm doing these constructs like this. And then once I have it out there, I know I'm going to use that line to create my 3D civil cell. So then I'll go to the place civil cell tool. And I'm going to make sure I'm using the 3D civil cell. So 3D urban driveway, and it needs these three references. So it will ask you for the back of sidewalk. And there's a profile on it. And then it will ask me for the edge of pavement. And I want to make sure I get the construction element that I just created. So it, it did actually uh, pick that one. And then the left driveway line here. And sometimes it comes in in the wrong orientation. You'll have to change either the driveway side orientation or the front of sidewalk. I'm sorry, the front of the edge of pavement because of the way the lines are drawn. And once you get it set in there correctly, you just accept it. And the prompts aren't following along, so I just uh, I'm gonna have to do that one more time here. And change the front. And then reset and accept. And if you look out here now, this driveway has been placed in that location according to the way this is set up. However, there, it's not clipped out, so you're seeing both. If we go to the cross-section view here, and before we make any changes, I want to show you where that driveway is located. So we're going to move back forward, actually, until I get into that driveway. So what you're seeing now is both the driveway and the normal corridor that's out there. And you'll see the drop curve is in there. If you were to rotate this model, you would see there's both being displayed here. So what you've got to do is clip the normal corridor with the references that are placed from the civil cell. So that is a corridor clipping. Let's make sure that I haven't forgotten anything. Go to my steps here. You might want to modify it. So let me show you the modification. So again, most of these handles are on construction class elements. So if you just hit your F7 key or go to your view settings, you can turn off the construction so you can see what's going on here. Again, if you pick the back sidewalk line, it's going to give you all the dimensions for the driveway. So if I wanted to change this to 12 feet, it will redraw the driveway in both the 2D and the 3D. And it will redraw it according to that flare out. So now the driveway, instead of being 18 feet wide, is, is, um, is 12 feet wide. The other thing that you'll want to do is change this normal default sidewalk width to minus 4 for the really narrow uh, utility strips. And hit Enter. And it will heal itself as well. And if you touch the cross section, it will, it's well, it's recreating this. Uh, you'll see that the sidewalk now goes back to four feet instead of the five foot mark, and it heals it. And this driveway is trying to hit the ground at a, um, at a certain distance uh, in this case. So if you wanted to modify this linear template, you could just uh, click on it and go to the modify tools. It'll bring up the 
essentially the width and the fact that it's trying to hit the existing surface, I guess, right here. So if that needed to tie down at 10 feet or it needed to go to a right-of-way, you could add any of those kind of constraints to it. But let's clip it from the corridor now. So I'll go to the corridor clippings. I'll select, uh, but before I do that, because it's going to take so long as it is, I'm going to go back to my corridor here. I'm going to go to this uh, settings. Instead of being uh, 2 foot, I'm going to set this to 10 feet, just because I know it's going to take a while to process. And my other driveway on the other side isn't going to look as detailed, but we're not worried about that one at the moment. So now it processes this. It doesn't. The, the corridor interval means nothing to this 3D civil cell because it's just its own object out here. But as soon as you add these objects to this corridor, it adds overhead to it. And you might be able to live with it for the once you see the results. So you add a corridor clipping reference. You select the corridor you want to clip. And then you select the first reference, which is going to be this tie down. The second reference will be this drop curb, which is these are both linear templates. And then in order to build all the, the actual driveway, there is a, a terrain out here that gets built. And what you'll want to do is select on that terrain as another corridor clipping reference. Once you have them all selected, you just hit reset and it will start to process and it will clip out the corridor with those components. If you hit F7 and obviously the clipping reference for the driveway, I don't know what happened there but it doesn't look like it came out right. This is the other point. I noted, I told you that sometimes this normal type F curb doesn't get clipped completely so there's two ways of fixing that. If you go back into the template and look at this curb here, you can either make this curb a little narrower or go to the linear template and make it a little wider. What I do is I just set this to be like 1.99 and tab, and I think that should be negative actually. Hit apply. And what that does, it just makes it a little bit less than two feet, just so that the corridor will clip a little cleaner and if you resynchronize the template that little sliver will go away and I think I know the reason why this one didn't clip out cleanly and that's the template interval also so the more detailed the corridor is the better result you're going to get with the clipping as well what I'll do is go back to this corridor and I'm going to set the interval a little tighter instead of 10 feet I'll go as long as you have time I'm going to process it at 2 feet notice that that little sliver line went away and that's just because it's now within the limits of the template drop clippings okay so while it's processing here I'll go look at a couple of the questions I have a driveway and a curve and the existing driveway I'm in, I am matching is not perpendicular to the alignment can you skew the driveway on a curve I know there are times when you want skewed uh, driveways coming off the back side of it, but normally the front side of an urban driveway is usually pretty much perpendicular to your edge of pavements, whether you're on a curve or a tangent. Uh, the next question, do I need to change the template for every civil cell that I place? Can I copy a civil cell from one location to another? That's a great question. Once you've placed a civil cell in your project and you've made changes to it for your project you can reuse that over and over so if I had placed another well let's just use this 2d one as an example because I did make some changes to that so I'm gonna I'm gonna need a horizontal reference line out here and I'll start here and I'll start there and there rather and then I can go to the place civil cells and if you place one not only do you have the option for the normal DGN lives, but you have one that's in the active design file. So there is an urban driveway out here. I don't know why the 3D one's not showing up, but uh, probably because it's now a clipping reference. If I just choose OK and then select the edge of pavement and then the back of sidewalk and the left side line here, and it may take a little bit of change in here. so. Let's change this. There it goes. And then if I 
reset and accept. Now it is using the changes that I made from the first one I placed. So it's 15 instead of 20 and it's 4 instead of uh, 5. So you can reuse them once you've made changes to them in this file, yes. All right, so let's just go through these steps again just to uh, reiterate what was done. So for the driveway template component, I had, of course, have a, have a reference line to place it. Then I used the 2D uh, urban driveway civil cell. I modified it, and you would need to clean the line work in order to um, clean out the curbs and the sidewalk lines and that type of thing. Then I copied the driveway from the modeling uh, from the corridor f.itl file into my project template. I made sure that my normal curb had a parent-child relationship set up so that I could add a display rule and turn that off whenever I added in the drive drop curb driveway template. I had to change a few things in that template for this project. I don't think I went to this display rule there, but let me go back to here. But I did modify some of these other things. Then I changed the project design stage settings from a, a preliminary with a 10-foot multiplier and I changed it to 1. And normally a template interval of 10, I changed that to 2, just so that it would process only every 2 feet. I also turned off some other uh, include critical section settings. Syn synchronized the template drops, added in the driveway line from the 2D civil cell and the curb face line from the 2D civil cell. I did talk about reapplying super elevation points and adding these, these point controls just because it's for the sake of time. Now with a 3D urban driveway civil cell, I essentially had to place those two reference lines, the left side and then the one along the edge of pavement, and make sure I had profiles on both of those using project element or additional profile by 3D element tool. How Once I got those set up, then it's just a matter of placing the 3D urban driveway civil cell. You can modify that one as well using the width and the sidewalk and all of the 2D and the 3D gets healed according to those modifications. Then I just added corridor clipping references to my corridor, the drop curb line, the tie down, and the proposed terrain of the driveway. And then I did have to go in and modify this curb width uh, in my normal corridor just because of the tolerance for clipping. And then adding back in the super elevation point control to the project was the last thing that I, I have to do. Um, and I'm out of time, so I can't really do that. But it will heal itself if you just apply super because of the fact that those are controlling it anyway. So again, the advantages with the template, it does process faster, especially when you've got several driveways. You only have to apply it in your template once and add in your horizontal feature constraints and all those, and it does process a little faster. And there's other tricks for making your corridor process faster as far as changing the the processing range of your corridor and so on and so forth. Uh, some of the disadvantages, there's a little more setup, your intervals have to be a little tighter, and there are going to be gaps. The uh, 3D urban driveway civil cell, there's really less setup except for those two lines. It does process slower. Uh, there are corridor clipping objects which aren't as efficient right now, but there are no gaps. And that was really the last summary for that. So. What if I don't want the tie-down that comes with the civil cell? As far as the 3D one, this, if I just zoom out, you can always just delete that one. It's, it doesn't hurt anything. Uh, if you want to just select this and choose delete, it will just delete it, and now it's going to basically reprocess. Because of the fact that it's a, uh, it's been added as a corridor object, a clipping object, it will, you probably will have to drop the clipping object first and then delete it. In, in the way that I did it, but all you'd have to do is just delete this linear template and it would delete that part out and it would stop at the back sidewalk there. Okay, well I don't want to run over too much. We'll go ahead and get the PowerPoint with the steps as well as the ITL, the modified ITL file that you can include and the DGN libs that have these new civil cells posted along with this recording. So good luck. If you have any questions, feel free to call our office. Thank you for attending.